Hey guys, it's Jenny Silver with a California news update for you on Monday, January 3rd. First, for those of you who have not seen the video that I previously released, I wanted to make sure that those of you who are homeowners know that the California Rental Assistance Program is open and accepting applications. An important thing to keep in mind here is that unfortunately, your mortgage servicer must opt into the program. Many of my subscribers are letting me know that while they did apply and did hear back relatively quickly on their application, that unfortunately their mortgage service provider chose not to participate in the program. For those of you that do want to complete an application, the link to apply is in the video description down below. Next, several California workplace legislation rules go into effect this month. SB 95 expired back in October of last year, which allowed for two weeks of paid sick leave for those infected with or caring for family members due to COVID. A different California OSHA rule was renewed on December 16th of last year, which allows for paid sick leave of up to 10 days for some workers who are sick or have been exposed to COVID-19. Under the renewed bill, employers are not required to pay sick leave for workers who must miss work to care for family members sick with COVID. Additionally, employers are also not required to pay sick leave if the employer can prove that the worker was infected outside of the workplace. Also going into effect later this month is Senate Bill B-606, authored by Senator Lena Gonzalez which allows Cal OSHA to issue enterprise-wide citations to companies with multiple health and safety violations. Historically, OSHA has issued single citations for companies with multiple violations, as well as employing negotiations rather than fines. Senator Gonzalez argued that companies continue to ignore COVID health and safety workplace rules despite outbreaks under a prior enforcement of rules. Critics of the bill say that it places undue burdens on businesses still recovering from the pandemic. Separate from pandemic-related workplace rules, Senate Bill 331 will expand upon existing laws curtailing the use of non-disclosure agreements in the workplace. The new law prohibits settlement agreements from preventing the disclosure of factual information regarding specified facts related to a claim filed. The new law makes confidentiality agreements in the workplace in response to cases of harassment and or discrimination illegal. Next, California Governor Gavin Newsom's mask mandate continues through January 15th. However, now California health officials are advising on the use of surgical or N95 masks in lieu of cloth Current California COVID cases are comparable to that of a year ago in January. However, the mortality rate has dropped significantly, showing a high of 707 deaths per seven-day average in January of 2021, now decreased to 23 deaths per seven-day average when data was taken on December 27th of 2021. Health officials are encouraging continued use of masking and testing in order to curb the spread with additional suggestions for the more effective surgical or an N95 versions of masks. The state has also called for those who travel outside of the state to get tested for COVID within three to five days of returning. Next, California has launched a program to compensate survivors of state-sponsored sterilization. From 1909 through 1979, under state eugenics law, thousands of people who lived in California state-run hospitals, homes, and institutions were sterilized. Those laws were repealed in 1979. However, it was later found that forced or coerced sterilizations continued to be performed on people in custody at state prisons or other correctional facilities under the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. The state apologized for its actions in 2003, but did not ban the practice until 2014. Assemblymember Wendy Carrillo proposed the program in Assembly Bill 1007. The budget provided legislative language establishing the Forced Sterilization Compensation Program and appropriated $7.5 million to fund the program. Beginning January 1, 2022, survivors of state-sponsored sterilization can apply for compensation through California's Forced or Involuntary Sterilization Compensation Program, which is administered by the California Victim Compensation Board. 
The California State Legislature reconvened today and budget negotiations continued ahead of the January 10th deadline. Governor Newsom has predicted another historic surplus for the fiscal year starting on July 1st. Due to a 1970s era law, there is a requirement on how these funds are to be used in the case of a budget surplus. Because of this requirement, it does hint to the possibility of a third Golden State stimulus. Under the GAN measure, the state of California has a limit for its spending, and once it reaches that limit, there are only a few ways in which additional budget surplus can be spent. Under the law's current interpretation, the excess revenue can be used to either cut taxes, split the money between taxpayer direct rebates and K-14 through schools, or it can be spent on infrastructure projects, local government aid, paying off debt, and emergencies. Because budget talks continue, there is no way to decipher whether or not we will receive another Golden State stimulus just yet. Next, for those of you in need of health insurance, the state's online health care marketplace, Covered California, has an enrollment deadline of January 31st. Okay, you guys, I hope that was helpful. Please click like, subscribe, and leave me a comment down below. Yes, I changed my desk. <laughs> because if you remember, about five months ago, my desk broke. It's just, just the table leg to my desk. I've been sitting at that broken desk with no leg on it for the last almost six months. So we had to move another desk up here. It's huge and it has to go against the wall. So I had to change my setup a little bit and I changed some of the things on it.